people can absolutely be callous towards the homeless, right? More often than not, people ignore the homeless as if they weren't really even there. You know, it's like it's like when a really well endowed woman enters an all boys school, right? Everyone's like, just look at the floor. Just look at the floor and take deep breaths. It'll all be over in a minute. For fuck's sake, is it gone? Are they gone? <laughs> Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a few quick things before we jump into the new episode you're about to check out here. Uh, as you may notice, there are some uh, laughs that you hear in the backdrop, and that is because this episode was filmed in front of a live virtual audience over Zoom. Uh, these shows happen once a month, and if you want to be a part of of the live virtual audience, you can do so by grabbing tickets to one of the upcoming shows uh, right now. They happen on the last Friday of every single month, and it's a new show every time that involves some storytelling and, of course, the socially conscious comedy that you guys uh, are, are about to enjoy in, in just a few minutes. And sometimes there will be some special guests kicking the show off, so it's something that you guys don't want to miss. So if you want to grab tickets, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. And that's pretty much the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. So if you enjoy these videos and you want to check out more things that I have put out there, uh, you can check out my live stand-up comedy albums. You can check out uh, all of the past v episodes of this show, uh, my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and join us on the live streams uh, when I stream on Mondays through Wednesdays and Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So again, go check everything out at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, now onwards to the episode. So it's been roughly about a year since this pandemic has started, and we've learned a lot about each other as a society, right? You know, we've learned that a lot of people uh, don't understand how air works, you know? Some people seem to believe that if you cover your nose with a piece of cloth, it will hinder you from breathing. And this means superheroes like Spider-Man, the Hooded Justice, the Black Panther, are all suffocating as they fight crime. <laughs> which, which I guess is what makes them super. I, I don't know. I just thought maybe it was the super sp strength and their you know, morality. But what do I know? Or, or the other thing they do is like, if you take your mask off, it'll help you hear better, right? Yeah. The amount of people I've heard say, wait, let me take my mask off so I can hear you better is staggering. Too many people. Uh, and by that, I mean, there was one guy that did it and that's too many people to do it. <laughs> which, is, which just goes to show that a lot of people don't have an understanding of the human respiratory system or ears. They don't know how ears work. Very different things, right? We've also learned that a majority of jobs don't need us to sit in traffic all morning, right? And then sit in a cubicle in a gray building and be forced to talk about fucking Game of Thrones at the water cooler, you know? Like, yes, yes, I saw the tits on the show, Jerry. And no, I don't want to discuss it because you make it weird. You make it weird all the time. You don't need to describe the tits, Jerry. I have eyes and they work just fine. Basically, what we've learned is that most of us can do our jobs from home without pants, which I think is the biggest takeaway from this pandemic. But one of the biggest things this pandemic has taught us is uh, that capitalism is genuinely awful. It's shown us how truly awful capitalism is. Right. Uh, thanks to capitalism, a system that claims to eradicate poverty and ensure that every citizen has the access to money, is well fed and fully ejaculated. 
America is due to see unprecedented levels of homelessness. During the pandemic, there's a lot of people who couldn't who couldn't work, period, or pivot their jobs to a virtual setting, or their hours got sucked, uh, cut to less than part-time work. These people look to the government to, you know, do their jobs in providing economic relief directly to their citizens, which is why we have governments. But the government did respond, and they responded by giving $6 trillion to Wall Street and the banking industry. That's that's where they went to. And Americans were then told to stay at home, right? Unless you had to take care of the essentials. You know, the really important stuff like groceries, medications, booze, the real important shit. Look, I'm pretty sure the fact that booze is in America's ap- amendments twice makes it essential. Soon, we'll probably add weed to that list as well. And quite frankly, I think we should have legalized weed when the term jazz cigarette went out of fashion in 1946. (laughs) We should have done it then. But because there was no economic relief directly to citizens uh, and the eviction moratoriums were coming and going constantly, capitalism created a situation where Americans were going to be put out into the street as a new wave of homelessness. And much like new wave music, this will also be a fucking disaster. (laughs) One person that knows what new wave is. Great. Uh, (laughs) Look, the oddity with this situation is the fact that the government wanted us to be locked in our homes with no financial support. And now we're creating an economic system where a bunch of us are going to be out on the streets due to no financial support. It's like, make up your minds, right? Well, are are we supposed to stay in or are we supposed to be out on the streets? Stay at home orders don't work when you don't have a home. It's kind of important for the, you know, the home part of stay at home. But look, a lot of folks chastised the homeless population and blamed the issue on the victim rather than identifying the economic forces involved to push someone to live under the bridges, so to speak. It's this, this sort of behavior is the stop hitting yourself of reasons to hate the homeless, right? Stop impoverishing yourself. Stop impoverishing yourself. Stop impoverishing yourself. It's basically what they're doing. Right now, America has over 553,000 homeless people when you count people that live in their cars, couch surf and other makeshift accommodations. At any given time, there are probably at minimum at least 500,000 homeless people across the nation. Now, compare that to Japan, where they have a total of 4,000 homeless people. And again, America proves that it is number one. It just just doesn't care what it's number one (laughs) in. Yeah. They just, don't, they just don't give a shit as long as they're number one, right? USA, USA, USA. Nobody chanted with me? Come on. <laughs> 70% of the homeless population are individuals, right? We're just average people living out there. About 30% are families, and yes, some of them even have kids. 37% of the homeless population are in dire need of housing and help. Black, brown, and LGBTQ folks are the majority of homeless when you, when you tally it all up. 17% of the homeless population are veterans. Look, I have a rule, and I feel like it's a pretty good, pretty good rule, right? I think for serving in rich people's wars, the veteran homelessness should be 0%, right? I think there should be an Iraq War veteran living with Dick Cheney, Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, the Bushes, the Rockefellers, and so on. They should just be living at their house nonstop, and all of these assholes should be waiting on that veteran hand (laughs) in hand. Amen. (laughs) Day in and day out. That's what they should do. Whatever fucking request they have, these people fulfill it. In fact, I think we should go as far as to say that these veterans are allowed to fire one round of buckshot at Dick Cheney anytime... (laughs) 
just like once a day, you know, not to I'm not an I'm not a dick, not to fatally wound him or anything, but just so he knows what they went through, you know. And then Dick Cheney will apologize to the veteran. I feel like that's a pretty good rule. Pretty good rule, you guys. Now, homelessness to this scale is a result of Reaganomics. And really, yeah, are, uh, yeah right. I mean, are we surprised by this at all? Right. Oh, man, a mediocre actor turned out to be one of the worst presidents America ever had. <laughs> oh, color me shocked. And then Reagan can, can imprison me uh, because shocked is a different color than white. Uh, and white is the only acceptable color <laughs> under a Reagan regime. So, and not just that, Barack Obama actually once said that if he could have voted in the 80s, he would have voted for Reagan. My Look, God. <laughs> yeah, he said that in an interview at one point, uh, you know, when he was making fun of progressives on the street and saying that defund the police is a quippy slogan. Uh, <laughs> Do you know how fun, the fun things that he says now? I Look, no idea. The, the amount of proof that we live in a corporate oligarchy at, ruled by one party is stacking higher and higher, isn't it? Ronald Reagan is the I'm not racist, but of presidents. That's what he is. Now, under the Reagan regime, public and affordable housing programs, along with a lot of social safety nets, were cut. Mix that with stagnant wages, with little or no raises, increased costs of livings, and corporations moving their factories overseas to get cheap laborers and enrich themselves, you've got yourself a recipe for record high homeless rates. But people can absolutely be callous towards the homeless, right? More often than not, people ignore the homeless as if they weren't really even there. You know, it's like it's like when a really well-endowed woman enters an all-boys school, right? Everyone's like, just look at the floor. Just look at the floor and take deep breaths. It'll all be over in a minute. For fuck's sake, is it gone? Are they gone? <laughs> <laughs> the only one that stares is Jerry, the, who grows up to be the guy at the water cooler, awkwardly describing breasts <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> now, people think that the homeless are drains on society cashing in on their welfare checks on booze and drugs, much like this former Oregon resident. Yeah. Oh boy. Why is Oregon becoming a location, central gathering point for homeless druggies? I think it's probably just uh, the welfare programs and stuff that they're giving them. And uh, I, I heard that like, up north in Seattle, I know they give out tents. And I think there's gotta be something like that going on here. Cause I'm like, I don't know where they're getting all their, their tents. I, obviously it's like super easy to get stamps and welfare and, and all this. It's, it's not that easy to get signed up for these <laughs> programs without an address. It's not super easy period. Yeah. But there's, you know, it's just hard to find food. It's hard to get a job without an address, without a shower, to be clean, to have clean clothes, you know, have a mailing address. It's just, what do you put on an application? I just want out of here. I don't, this isn't home sweet home. Not just that, but try being a housed immigrant trying to get on Medicaid, defining and redefining citizenship and explaining what a fucking green card is once every 40 seconds. It's exhausting. Okay. Very, very tiresome. But that's not all. This guy goes on to say even more callous stuff about homeless people. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is this cracks me up. So there's a thing that uh, people are doing like crazy. So uh, our uh, our bottles our our bottles have a ten cent deposit on them here. So what tons of the homeless people do? They they give them like they'll give them like a flat of uh, like a crate of bottles, and they'll take them to where they recycle, and they'll dump all the water out and turning the cans just to get a couple bucks to go get some booze or some drugs or whatever. Yeah, trying to sell bottles for, you know, only booze and drugs. What about food? Not all homeless people are, are drug addicts, but really, can you blame them for doing drugs or needing a drink? I mean, most of us are ready to pound a fifth of whiskey because we got cut off in traffic, right? Most of us would take a hit of heroin if we didn't find the right kind of cheese we wanted at the grocery store. 
Look, these people survive in rough conditions day in and day out. So if they want a little booze to take the edge off of callous statement like Craig's here, then fucking go for it. I'll pour you the first damn shot. Cheers. Besides, don't forget, alcohol is essential in America. Very essential. <laughs> But people like this often call homeless people drains on society, but then they champion people like Jeff Bezos, Tim Cook, the Waltons, and Bill Gates. Right? Those guys are the real drains to society. They don't pay taxes. They are creating the homeless crisis by pushing for deregulation on all private industries, creating monopolies, and keeping wages stagnant. These people are the real drains in America. And therein lies the next reason for homelessness in America, the stagnation of wages. In America, minimum wage hasn't increased in over a decade. Look, that's like if you were watching the show Friends and every episode was Ross and Rachel dating and then they go on a break and then they start dating again for 10 straight years on a loop over and over again. But at least Friends had the decency to stop that shit after nine years, you know? Good for them. With stagnant wages and corporate, uh, uh, corporations skirting labor laws by hiring part-time workers, most Americans have to get two to three jobs just to survive. And then even then, some people don't. A fair amount of homeless people are employed. They just don't make enough money to afford a vehicle to take them to work and a home to house them. And that's not their fault. That's the fault of every CEO, corporate stooge, and politician that lacks the will to increase the minimum wage to a livable amount because they need to satiate their fucking greed. The billionaires and the CEOs and the purchase politicians are the real addicts in this situation. What are they addicted to? Money. That's what they're addicted to. But guys, look, don't worry. I know I'm making a mountain out of a molehill because there's kind of sort of slightly, maybe not really a chance that the minimum wage will go up to $15 an hour from $7.25 by 2025. You know, maybe, I don't know. That'll be roughly five years too late to be 10 years too late, which for the math fans out there means it's 15 years too late for the fight for 15. The wage issue and the cost of living is one of the major reasons why cities like Seattle, San Diego, and San Francisco are seeing an increase in their homeless population. Look, when I was in San Francisco a few years ago, the city streets were filled with homeless people. They didn't panhandle, they didn't ask me for money, but they did give me a look like, well, shit, you probably don't have any money either. Which, you know, they were right. I didn't. <laughs> But despite my lack of in income, I, I, you know, my lack of money, I'd still try to give something to the homeless folks, food, water, some cash if I have it. And this is something I get chastised. Uh, I get chastised for this by my friends all the time, right? They look at me and they go, well, Chris, you have no money. If you keep giving them money or food, what's left for you? And sure, that might be true. But, you know, right now I have a little bit more than them, so it's okay. And if I do wind up being homeless... When they're, uh, when they're off the streets in their homes, I'm hoping that they will give me a dollar when I ask for it. Amen. Yeah. That is called the circle of life. Hmm. Another reason why people try to avoid the homeless is because, well, they all have mental illnesses. And that's not really true either, right? I mean, some do have mental illnesses and are in dire need of some kind of help. But after really being ignored by most of humanity, let's be honest we'd all go a little crazy, right? Just just so people would acknowledge your existence. And if you don't go a little crazy, th that I kind of feel like is even crazier. <laughs> have you have you ever gotten a silent treatment from your partner or or your significant other or or like your cat? You know, like after a while you start wondering if you really exist or have you become Patrick Swayze from the movie Ghost? Being homeless is that feeling 100% of the time. And which one of us can really claim that we don't have any mental illnesses, right? Everyone is a little crazy. Look, I myself am a hyper anxious dude 
with PTSD from an emotionally abusive relationship. And I decided comedian was going to be my full-time job. <laughs> I'm at minimum 66% crazy. <laughs> Another major cause of homelessness is uh, prisoners who are, who are let out with absolutely nothing to their name. They're discriminated against uh, for getting a lot of jobs and can't find a stable home and then therefore wind up in prison or end up homeless, which then also winds them back in prison. Regardless of what happens, the prison system is set to recycle prisoners in America, which is the only green initiative this fucking country believes in. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some folks out there that prefer the unhoused lifestyle. Right. They live out of their cars and they're nomads and they travel through the land. Yeah. They they either hustle on the street or get temporary gigs as they travel around. Uh, and those folks are part of the homeless population, too. But their reasons are often used as a scapegoat to not help the homeless. Right. How many times have you heard people go, oh, well, they chose that way to, of life. You know, they chose to be out there and they made their choices and now they have to stick with it. But the reality is the homelessness problem was created and escalated by capitalism. You can't run an economic system built on greed for the few and ex expect the majority to benefit. This is an unequal system, and it will continue to create further inequalities till most of us are homeless and working for a Mezo Mart sponsored by Micro Apple. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm. And if you're trying to subvert censorship the best place to do that is rockfin uh, rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create and there's absolutely no censorship on that platform so if you want to follow me on rockfin you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohan haha and if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making either a one-time donation, which acts as, uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows, uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and, and leave comments for me as, um, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -H. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.